how can you finally overcome nighttime disturbances so that you can sleep through the night and wake up refreshed in the morning? This is the second most common sleep problem that I come across in my practice, and I've been working with clients for the last seven years. There are different versions of um, this sleep problem. So in this video, we will look at the three main types of what I call sleep triggers that either wake you up in the middle of the night or stop you falling back into sleep again. So we'll look at those three main uh, parts when it comes to this nighttime disturbances area of sleep problems. So those of you who are new to my channel, then welcome and let me introduce myself. Those of you who are uh, familiar with my work, then come and say hello again. I always love to hear from you. So my name is Beatrix Schmidt and I'm a sleep coach, a professional speaker and the creator of the Sleep Skills for Life program which is a program that I developed after I struggled with insomnia too. Um, I actually spent the last 12 years of researching sleep from the practical perspective to be able to help people like you to finally overcome sleep problems and develop great quality sleep. And not because it's a hit and miss, but they actually really know how to make it happen. So the program itself is very much a roadmap, a practical roadmap to take you from the sleep struggles that you have, all the way to really developing those skill sets, hence sleep skills, so that you can actually make great quality sleep happen consistently. So if you're interested in that, the, the um, link is below. Come check it out and I'm looking forward to seeing you if you decide to join us. But those of you who have been around and maybe you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button below Make sure you like this video at the end and, and that little bell will actually help me to let you know when I publish a new video. So make sure you hit that one as well. So now that we've covered all the basics, let's go back into actually talking about the main topic of today's video. So the, the first thing I wanted to start before we go into the three different uh, sleep trigger groups is that one of the misconceptions that I hear quite often is you should never wake up in the middle of the night and that's not quite true. The human body is designed to go in and out of sleep stages and I'm not going to go into the science of sleep stages, maybe we'll cover that in a different video but there are five different sleep stages that we go through throughout the night and every single person has a different combination. Now when we transition from one sleep stage to the other we naturally transition out and become a bit more awake. But what I've seen with clients who have nighttime disturbances, they become too awake and not able to fall back into another sleep stage. So you've got that some sort of really awake uh, period in between. And that's when the problem starts. That's when tossing and turning starts. That's when you might not even know what to do to fall back into sleep again. And I've had clients who have either tossed and turned for hours, or let's say they woke up at four o'clock in the morning and they were not able to fall back into sleep again for the rest of the night. So I know how much this can be a really huge problem um, for you if that's what you're struggling with at the moment. So just know that it's not abnormal to wake up, but it's how you're able to help the body and the mind to fall back into sleep again so that actually you're able to continue sleeping and create a good quality sleep overall at night. So let's look at those sleep trigger groups. The first uh, one is physical, so physical sleep triggers. These can be very simply because of medications you're taking or any medical diagnosis you already have. Um, any of those things will have a physical effect on sleep too, so it's important not to ignore them and put yourself into a box that you don't belong um, and really honoring some of those things that you're going through at the moment in terms of physical uh, problems or, or medical problems. Um, the other part here is sleep disorders. Nighttime disturbances can directly link back into sleep disorders and most people don't even know that there are 64 different types of sleep disorders. So this is not, I'm not here to self-diagnose you or scare you, but it's important to actually have an assessment, especially when it comes to nighttime disturbances, because you probably don't really know the full extent of what might be going on for you. 
So if you want to have an assessment with me, you can find the details below or make sure you actually speak to someone who's practiced in the field um, so that you don't actually have a diagnosis that isn't true. Um, and again, I've seen this over the years again um, with different clients who were not actually having the appropriate treatment that they needed. The other thing I wanted to quickly talk about here is life transition. So the body transitions as we are getting older. Um, the hormone balances change. This is where often we re re refer to menopause for women, but men go through hormonal changes as well. And that change it can become a physical trigger why the sleep is not as good quality as you had before. Again, that's why I'm saying make sure you have a proper assessment rather than just pinpoint something and think that's, that's uh, the one that you have. So that's the physical group. The second group is what I call mental triggers. These often relate back to personality factors. And in my work, I look at 16 different personality factors. So I'm not going to have time to discuss all of them in this video. But let's just talk about one of them, which is the thinker type. If you're one of those people who have a lot of thoughts going around in your head, and maybe those are the ones that come up in the middle of the night, and you're tossing and turning, and you don't know why your brain is keeping those thoughts going around, then that's probably one of the ones that will relate to you. Um, the brain needs to process, and often when we don't have time to process during the day, that's what happens at night. So you might be waking up in the middle of the night, and it's because it's quiet around you, your brain is actually going to go and process things. Whether or not they are past-related, meaning you look back at the day and, and problem solve maybe some of the things that you have struggled with, or they're future-oriented, which means that you look forward to maybe planning ahead for something. And those are the kind of main types of thoughts that I see in my practice. So those are the mental triggers. Those are generally linked back to, to, to certain personality factors. And it's about just taming the personality factors or traits that you have rather than changing who you are. But really learning, and again, skill sets, right? Practicals is learning how to actually help your body and your mind to calm down and your mind to actually stop going around with those thoughts um, and keeping you awake in the night. And then the third part is emotions. These can be positive or negative. They don't have to be just negative. Um, if we're very excited about something, that can equally uh, keep us awake or wake us in the middle of the night. Um, and uh, we've got the negative group, which can be worries, frustrations, even potentially anxiousness. And these emotions become heightened. So if your emotions are very calm, then generally you're able to fall back into sleep again. But when I look at this, group, it's often because those emotions become heightened, whether that's positive or negative. So if you have heightened uh, worries or concerns or frustrations, your body isn't really going to be focusing on falling back into sleep again, because with all these different triggers, the body thinks that it's, it's in danger. That's a normal response to some of these things, back from how our body has been designed for centuries. Um, you know, those responses are normal. It's how the how we're able to uh, deal with them and learn the skills to be able to fall back into sleep again. So those emotions are the third uh, type of triggers that I see, and they're very common. And sometimes you've got all three. So you might start with a physical thing, then you potentially toss and turn and start thinking about it, and then you start getting frustrated about the fact that you haven't fallen back into sleep again. This is, again, just one dynamic out of the many different combinations I've seen over the years. So what do you do about them? The first thing is acknowledge what's happening. Why? The root cause. What is the root cause of you waking up or not being able to fall asleep again? Putting the appropriate plan in place. That's why it has to be appropriate for you. But as an overall suggestion that I have, is instead of putting pressure on falling back into sleep, Start with neutral. So how can you become more relaxed? Relaxed physically, relaxed mentally, and relaxed emotionally. And you start with that. That means you have a higher chance of the body not feeling danger again and falling back into sleep. And, and that's a comfortable, safe place to go to, meaning that the body isn't really going to be looking for sort of um, 
reasons to keep you awake for longer. So I hope this video has helped. We've gone through all the dif uh, different groups. If you have any more questions about this, please feel free to pop them in the comment box below uh, or you can submit them for the sleep Q&A video that I will publish later on this week. Um, obviously, we're not going to have time to um, sort of pick them up very quickly, but over the coming weeks, we are going to be processing them and I'll be answering more of these questions that I get from you, from my community. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell so I can let you know when the new video is posted and share it to a friend or a family member that struggles with sleep problems because I've seen them over the years and it's definitely something that people increasingly struggle with. Um, and of course, you know where to find me if you want to inquire about any of my services as well. I'm here to help and support you because I know how it feels not to be able to sleep well at night. I've been there, I struggled with insomnia and it's not nice to be able to wake up, um, not to be able to wake up refreshed in the morning. So let's help and support you to really develop those sleep skills for life so you can really develop good quality sleep for, cons for many years and for consistently as well. So thank you for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.